We are in a climate where the Europeans have done a lot of anthropological studies of other people. They have studied American Indians, they studied the Africans, our ancestors, they study tribes lost somewhere in Australia, but no one has actually sat down and studied the European. No one has gone into looking at the European from an anthropological standard, how they really are, where they really came from, what is the nature of this person, what is the nature of this tribe, this clan, this family. So what I'm going to do is give you a background into uh, nutritional causes of what we call today racism. Now, the Europeans came from somewhere, first of all. Um, they claim they walked from Asia all the way up to Europe, and they established their civilization in Europe. They took a 4,000-mile walk up to, from Asia up to Europe. That is their claim, and they claim their race is from three Sanskrit words. That is their claim, but the only thing we have historically to document them is what the facts are. There are a lot of people who claim that they were made and created in a laboratory, the Europeans. There are a lot of people who claim they are a degenerate black person, someone who suffers from our a melanin deficiency. That is true. But the facts are they came from somewhere. So we can look at where they came from and what caused them to behave the way they behave. Strictly as a science, like you look at any other animal. Uh, there are human beings that behave like animals and then there are animals that behave like human beings. So we're going to look at some animals that behave like human beings. Now, According to, uh, uh, let me go to the chalkboard for a minute. Now, we're going back to maybe uh, one million and a half years ago. And during that period of time, they had what they call the Ice Age. And that was about from one and a half million years ago. Can I have your attention, please? Workshop, sir. Uh, I'll let him pause there. Dealing with abusive relationships, rule world two. The challenges of international interracial relationships is in rule. Yes, yeah, so uh, we know that the Ice Age started, the most recent one started uh, one and a half million years ago, and it just stopped about 10,000 years ago. That's when it stopped 10,000 years ago. And the ice receded about 5,000 years ago. And the Europeans entered into history 4,000 years ago. This is when they first recorded race called the Europeans 4,000 years ago. That was called, recorded on a pallet, on a mace head in Africa when they first met the Europeans. That's 4,000 years ago. So this is when they entered history. And of course, uh, they entered history violently. And we say they, they were violent people. Well, they came from the Ice Age. Now, we're in Europe, we're around France, Germany, Sweden, the Slavic countries. Those areas are known as glaciated. Glaciated soil, when the ice mounts, the ice floods the area, and when it floods, it washes away all the vital nutrients. This is what happened. Uh, so, I'm going to just outline some of them and go over some of them that were washed away from the soil. Selenium. Anyone raised on Ice Age glaciated soil, that's in France, that's in Germany, that's in England, is going to have a selenium deficiency. This is fact. This is what the soil content is. They're going to have a zinc deficiency. They're also going to have a phosphate deficiency. 
or phosphorus, excuse me. That's just some of the deficiencies, just from raised, eating plants that are raised on this glaciated soil in Britain, in France, in Sweden, in the European countries. So they're raised on soil that is depleted of these nutrients. When you have a selenium deficiency, you become irritable very easily. Your mind becomes unstable. When you have a zinc deficiency, you lack a neural, it's, a, it's an element used to transmit nerve messages. So your nerve messages are not transported balancedly, you see, just by having a zinc deficiency. Then when you have a phosphate and potassium deficiency, by the way, this is the soil that raised the plants that they were, eat they were eating. It was deficient in these nutrients. And when you look up these nutrients in a textbook, you'll find that a person that lacks them is violent, very easily irritated, and suffers from what they call schizophrenia, which is a mind and mood disorder. So the Europeans are raised on what we call glaciated soil. So they are deficient in these nutrients from five, four, ten thousand years ago. So they continuously were eating plants that were deficient of these nutrients. And when you're deficient of certain nutrients, each nutrient controls a form of behavior. If I take away your selenium, you will become sterile because selenium is highest in concentrate, concentration in the male system where the testicles is, in the sperm, selenium. So is zinc. That's why long ago they told brothers to eat oysters. They were after the zinc, you see. And that's the highest concentration is in the sperm. The highest concentration of vitamin C is around the sem semen. That's eight, eight to ten times higher than the vitamin C that's in the systemic floating blood system. So these vital nutrients were not in the soil of the Europeans. Therefore, nutritionally, their behavior could only be one of an unstable personality, violence, aggression, easily irritated. And then, added on to this deficient soil, we have a pineal gland. I'm going to go to the board again. A pineal gland. That's the one that makes melanin. And when you're deficient, their, their pineal gland is 60 to 80% non-functional. Whereas African people have a 100% functional pineal gland. Pineal gland is a gland that is in the center of your brain. And it makes a brain cell for all the cells in the body. It is the master gland. Without it, nothing happens. Nothing. All they tell us is that the pineal gland makes black. But they do not tell you that without the pineal gland, there's no nucleus to any cell in your body. If your pineal gland is very active and stimulated, you can make yourself darker. The Europeans have used experiments where they put themselves in a glass bubble and just stimulated the pineal gland without the sun and became darker because they stimulated the pineal gland to make the melanocyte stimulating hormone. So they are deficient in melanin, you see. And without the melanin, you have no balance. You lack spirituality, you see. So we have three major things we have the melanin deficiency. This is anatomically. I'm not going into social science. We all know about prejudice and all that sort of thing, but we tend to not look at the animal that behaves like a human being. So we have the uh, mineral deficiency, the selenium, the zinc, the phosphorus, potassium, and we have the melanin deficiency. All of this is coming out of the ice age where the soil was depleted of these nutrients. So we have a melanin deficiency. When you have a melanin deficiency, you have something that's called obsessive compulsion.
impulsive behavior. I hope you can understand my writing. A melanin deficiency produces obsessive compulsive behavior. This behavior is the behavior of uh, what you would call an addictive person. Someone that has to do things step by step. Because when you hide melanin, you are creative, you're more intuitive. So you create your own steps. But to, when you're deficient in melanin, you have to go step by step by step. And that's called addictive behavior. If I want to teach someone with a melanin deficiency how to dance, I better paint the steps by steps by step on the floor. That is because they're coming out of a melanin deficiency. And that's obsessive compulsive behavior, which you call racism. So, obsessive compulsive people are inherently inferior. Now all I've spoken to you about is what is nutritionally going on with the person that we uh, call the Europeans, the Caucasians. What we have been going on in our uh, plight with them is dealing with them socially and say they do this socially and they do this socially and we don't like this so we protest and we march and all that sort of thing. But we have not, as I said earlier, looked at them as strictly as they look at another group of people. They go in, they take the scientists, and they examine a group of people and they call it anthropology. Now we're going in and we're taking the science of our mind, because the mind means science, to know, and we're looking at them. They come from a glaciated area, selenium deficiency, zinc deficiency, phosphorus deficiency, potassium deficiency. They also come from a melanin deficiency. And what does all of this produce? I repeat, unstable thinking, easily irritated, aggressive behavior, distorts reality. Distortion of reality is known as a psychosis. If I show you the pyramids in Africa and you say black people are dumb, then you are distorting reality. The thing with a mind that's in this kind of state, in this diseased state, is that it believes first and then it sees. You are used to thinking seeing is believing. If you see the truth, if I show you the pyramids, and I say it sits in the direct center of the landmass, and I say a star passes over it every 50,000 years, and then I show you the calculus in the building, and the geometry in the building, and then I show you the space age, which was invented in Africa when they did astrology, as you call it. That was the opening of the space age. And I show you all this evidence, and you say African people are inferior, then you are suffering from a selenium deficiency, a zinc deficiency, a phosphorus deficiency, and a melanin deficiency, because you have distorted reality to inferiority. A group of people who are inferior use their imagination and create an illusion that they are superior. There is nothing in recorded history to document that the Caucasians are superior. Nothing. When you read the book Race and Civilization, you find out that they just started stop cannibalism in 1946 in Germany. You have to realize that I haven't given you the social wolf pack behavior of the Europeans. We haven't gotten into them as a socializing creature. Remembering that our African ancestors, what makes us great is that we founded human relationship. We know how to get along with each other. The black man knows how to get along with the black woman until the Europeans introduced him to his distortions, you see. What made us powerful is not the math, not the chemistry, it's human relationship. We know how to get along with each other, our children, and God. It's relationship. We have mastered the science of relationship. But when you suffer from a mineral deficiency such as this, and a melanin deficiency such as this, and you are inferior, you're going to re distort reality. And that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with some animals that behave like human beings. So we constantly try to get them to change their minds, to change their behavior with all these 
wonderful intellectual thoughts about harmony and peace and love and brotherhood and all that sort of thing. But you don't do that to a person who is drunk. You don't give them an intellectual sandwich. You have to treat a person like that. You have to first cleanse their system, get rid of their addiction. You find out that they are deficient in glutamate, glutamic acid. They have a glutamic acid deficiency. This feeds the brain, glutamic acid. I don't want to clutter the board too much, although I do need a racer. Now, I told you about the Ice Age, the most recent one is the one and a half million years ago, which ended 10,000 years ago, and the, and the ice regressed it 5,000 years ago, and then you had the European entering history 4,000 years ago. This is the only recorded incident of them in history. The Romans and the Greeks are not Europeans. They are Mediterranean cultures. See, what has happened is a person at some history. They have written themselves into history, and you believe it. They are not from the Roman Empire. They are not from Greece. They never were a part of it. At all. Now, the, the ice regress. I'm trying to give you the social climate. Now, when these icebergs are moving, they sound like lightning. They like bolts, and they rock the whole earth. And it's a very, it's like an earthquake all the time. You walk down the street, and the street opens up and swallows you. You see, this is the ice age. This is the kind of social environment they were in. Understand me? Now, with all that going on, you have human traps. Now, you, I know you, you don't, you think that the Europeans are buying us as slaves to work the land, but some of us were sold just for delicacies. Some of us were eaten. They have human traps. They have traps for how to capture children, they have human broths, how to bake a child. These are in their recipe books. Race and Civilization is the name of the book, and if you want to hide it, Europeans really behave, you read a book called Dirty. Dirt. That's what it's called. Race and Civilization is one book, and the other book is Dirt. That's the title. <laughs> I can't think of the authors right now. But the, the behavior is what we're talking about. And when you have this atmosphere where these, the earth is shaking and rolling under your feet, it can produce a lot of fear in you. And then the, the food supply because the land is frozen and the water is frozen. So you have a shortage of food. So you're going from starvation to overeating, starvation to overeating, which we call binging or bulimia. And when you meet people, you transmit the same illness to them. And so you got black people that overeat and they go on a diet, which is starvation, and they overeat and they go on a diet. So we're just copying their behavior. See, they don't have to teach us confusion. They are confusion. You see. Nonetheless, we have all this going on, and then we have something that closely resembles their social condition. And the social condition is that of what we call a wolf pack. It's wolf pack behavior. In that, when, you, uh, when a wolf captures its prey, they are together killing the carcass, and then once the carcass is killed, then they start fighting amongst each other. And that's what they always do. Their wolf packs today are called alliances. North American Treaty Alliance, the United Nations. These are alliances that they form to attack a caucus, or be that Africa, Somalia, Ethiopia. And once they have attacked it, then they fight amongst each other. This is wolf pack behavior. And the, and the wolf always resorts to juvenile behavior after it captures its prey. It becomes very childish and licks each other and cuddles up and does these very childish behaviors. And sure enough, after they capture their prey, be it Africa, African people in prison or 
sexually, however they want to capture us, or capture us through peace, or capture us through war. Any tool that they use is to rule and control you. It doesn't matter what the tool is. The tool can be war. The tool can be peace. The tool can be religion. Any device they use is going to be used to rule and control you. If they give you money, they use money to rule and control you. 90% of all the millionaires, black millionaires, invest in white people, in their businesses, excuse me. So money is just used. You say, all this money black people make. Yes, but they gave it to you. So whoever gave it to you, gave it to you for their benefit. So what they gave you is to rule and control you. So you fight the vote. Now that you vote, and they use voting to rule and control you. Then you fight to get in the classroom. And what do they do? The miseducation of the Negro. Do I have to go into that? They use education to rule and control. Please. Workshop, boys and men. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, what we have is the wolf pack behavior. And I'm going over a lot of large concepts very fast, I know that. So, uh, but I'm trying to say is they wolf pack. That's why they come together and have sex, which we call orgies. See, they always come together for these activities. They come together and burn a Negro at the stake, and you call it the Ku Klux Klan. Then they, the meeting's over, then they're fighting each other at work and doing this same little childish behavior. Or if they have a celebration, they use alcohol, and then they start acting silly. Then you wonder why they're acting silly, because they were always silly. But uh, the thing is, I'm just trying to identify some of the things, so you can start looking at an animal that's behaving like a human being. Because to be human doesn't mean you have two legs and two arms. Human is a way of behavior. That's why our ancestors said, uh, when you finished the, what we call the rites of passage, which is a German term for a course of academic study. We're academicians. We teach. We learn. But the German invented this term, rites of passage, to kind of throw you off. Like they invented the term naturopathy, which is my field, naturopathic medicine, to throw you off. They are not going to call it African hygienic health. They are not going to call anything of ours African and let us know. So they invent another term. Remember, they're coming from the Ice Age 5,000 years ago. Here you are, African man and woman, averaging 200 to 300 years of age. They're living to be 30 years of age. You have the equivalent of a PhD at 12 years old. That's the, your you know, level of intelligence in Africa. What you're fighting to get to, a 12-year-old kid already has. So here you come with all this intelligence and this vast vocabulary, because remember, they're coming out of the Ice Age, so they didn't have indoor plumbing like our ancestors had, or glass windows, remember this. We had a whole vocabulary of words they didn't know what we were talking about. And you're trying to pick out some words to communicate to them. So there is no connection between what you are saying at all. None whatsoever. As similar to you, you don't know anything about, uh, say, if I start talking about the neurohormonal connections and all that, and I'm talking biochemistry, and you walk into class and I'm giving this biochemical uh, uh, lecture, you say, well, all this is a mystery to me. So when they walk into an African college or university, they say, this is a mystery system. This is all a mystery to me. So they name our system a mystery system. Because it is a mystery to them. Excuse me. Nonetheless, uh, this is the condition <laughs> that they were in when they came into Africa. A mineral deficiency from the glaciated soil. The plants raised on that soil lacked the nutrients. And then they had a melanin deficiency from a calcified pineal gland. So they had these two biological things working toward their degree of insanity. Now, now we find that everyone, everyone had the same illness. If all of you were Europeans, all of you have the same illness because all of us are raised on the same soil, mind you. So your scientists have it. Your religious leaders have it. Your teachers have it. All of them have it. So they do not know they have it. Look, when our ancestors were trying to teach them about religion, about God, they did three things to this concept. 
this idea, this philosophy, which we never called a religion. Our oriental cultures call it a philosophy. The Europeans organize a group, a man in top of it, in charge of it, and they call it religion. That's altogether different from what we had as religion. So they organize their religions to inferiorize the woman, put her down, justify slavery. That's two things that their religions are going to do. Inferiorize the woman, justify slavery. That's two things, remember. And anything that refers to African religions is going to be called pagan. You go into the European version of the Muhammad or Islamic religion, it inferiorizes women, it justifies slavery, and it calls anything African pagan. You go into the European version of Christianity, women are counted with cattle and all that sort of thing. It inferiorizes women, justifies slavery, and call anything that deals with African religion pagan. It does these things, all of them, all the major European religions, Islam, Christianity, and Judo, Judaism, all of those are European religions. Anything that the European uses to reinforce their position. So, as I mentioned before, if I, they give you religion, it's to rule and control you. If I give you the right to vote, it's to rule and control you. If I give you money, it's to rule and control you. All of these things are d done to rule and control us. Now, when our ancestors were architecting and putting together our culture, they did not look over their shoulder at what the Europeans are doing. And we need not look over our shoulder at what the Europeans are doing. We don't need that to grow and develop and learn. Because as long as we look over our shoulder at them, we are always attached to them. So, traditionally, if I go in and I talk about uh, health, uh, nutrition, people say, well, where's your documentation? Or what are your credentials? Uh, oh, you mean what plantation I was raised on? Why don't you just come out and say it? You know, that's what I want to tell them, but I understand we're all coming from the same kind of ignorance, so I say, oh, yeah, I went to school, you know, I got a piece of paper from the white man. He says my brain is officially in my head. You know, so I uh, showed a piece of paper, but it means nothing to me. You know, and they say, oh, so that's, uh, so I mentioned something about the, the, the glaciated ice age where the soil was robbed and all that stuff. Well, where's your documentation? Where's your evidence? I just point to white people. There's my evidence. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I can't do that. I got to be official and scientific and I run down all of this stuff about the soil and all that sort of thing. And I run down the, the uh, melanin deficiency. When you have a melanin deficiency, you're going to have obsessive compulsive behavior because you protect an inferior position. When you, heard the, when you just arrived on the scene of civilization 4,000 years ago and you arrived violently coming into Africa and catfish had to throw you out, uh, which, uh, I'm using his nickname, Memphis. Uh, the city of Memphis named that? Uh, Menace. Menace, yeah, yeah, right, right. Okay, Menace, I had to go through all that. Uh, he threw them out and united upper and lower now. See. So when they entered history, it was violently. Now, so now we have all of these tools that are used to control and ruin us. And then we also have romance that is used to control and ruin us. And then you look up the word Rome and you see it comes from Urim. And Urim comes from Rim. And Rim means the Nile. And Nile means the laws of the great truth. The laws of the female and male attributes of God. That's why God was always called Mother, Father God in our culture, because we could not conceive of a man being balanced by himself. All right, brother. So we call God Mother, Father God, <coughs> you see. So the whole concept of, rant, of romance is African, but they took it and used it to control and ruin us. The first epic on romance is uh, the epic about uh, Ata, the romance of Ata, uh, 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 African brother. Because romance is conceived as uh, I meet a woman and a woman meets me, boy meets girl, that kind of thing. And you go into this yin-yang symbolism of man and woman, which the Europeans also took. It goes like this. 
yin yang. The, the yin yang is the male and female together, you see. And they just took out this part <laughs> and left the other part because that connects it to Africa. Just that they took the number five and took out the ankh that was on top of it and just left this part. Because if you leave that in, it connects to Africa. So they took all these out. It's, it's a thing about the words you get. If you ever looked at the old Bibles, you see these words, all these decorations around them. That, that is the holistic meaning of the letter. That word is a, a story in itself. So you won't find all of these. I'm digressing here. I don't like to do that to you. And you find all these curly cues around words in the old Bibles. That's the holistic meaning that our ancestors put on the words. So the Europeans could not deal with all of that. So they just left it that way. So I'm, I'm saying this whole thing about romance is taken away from us and now it's used to control and ruin us. And also sex is used that way. Sex is used to control and ruin us. That's all it's used for. There's no other purpose for it. It is one of the highest grossing things in this country. Sex is used to make money. And anything that's used to make money, white people are not going to let you have. But nonetheless, we're getting into this mineral deficiency and we're trying to be very scientific about it. Now, uh, when you have a melanin deficiency, what melanin does is uh, it controls the rate in which your bones grow. The calcium and mag uh, magnesium ratios, it controls bone growth. So uh, African people have a, a higher density in their bones than Europeans. Our muscles are darker and has a lesser salt content our muscles are lighter, excuse me, so we have uh, fast twitch muscles which responds to stimulus faster. Now, I've given you that the bones are different. I've given you that the muscles are different. Our blood is different. You see, we have a lesser amount of white blood cells. And our, our red blood cells crystallizes in a kind of uh, pyramid shape when you burn it. And the Europeans does not, you see. So our blood is different. Then our nerves have more melanin in it, so it transmits messages better. The one thing that melanin does is it stores from memory to memory. It's like if you want to remember something, you have to go back to your memory and think about it, and then you bring it up to your present state of mind. Well, when you're African, you don't have to. Wherever you want it is in the memory, so you just transfer from one memory to another. You see, and so the Europeans met our ancestors and said, they, they, you ask them a question, and they act all slow in answering it, and they breathe deep, <laughs> you know, they must be dumb, you see. We didn't have to go through all that to, to get our information. We just did it, deep breathed, transmitted the information back and forth, and it was done. The conversation was over. We used less words. The Europeans are known to talk a lot, giggle a lot, and chew chewing gum. They're very talkative. The American Indians said they talk a lot. Of course, the American Indians always told us that they speak with forked tongues. You know, and we just say they use word trickery. To us, we are labeling a mental illness. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Stop saying this word trickery. Stop saying they have racism. Stop saying all of that. They have a mental illness by anybody's definition. By their own definition, they have a mental illness. You look at a selenium deficiency, zinc deficiency, phosphorus deficiency, potassium deficiency. Look at it. A person that suffers from that has a mental illness, scientifically. A person with a melanin deficiency has an obsessive compulsive disorder. Scientifically, they are mentally ill. They are not white, white racist. They are mentally ill. Let's call them what they are. They always told us, call a spade a spade. <laughs> so, but I'm very tactful when I talk to them because I realize the nature of the animal that I'm dealing with. Because once you upset them, they become violent. They become very violent. Yes. They'll attack you with their pink slips, fire. <laughs> they become very violent. We have uh, black people today who are following the Europeans and their diet, and so we are beginning to get selenium deficiency, zinc yeah. deficiency, but, and our male pineal gland is becoming underactive. And we're not producing enough melanin because we're eating their diet. That is the problem. We're eating their diet, and their diet has produced nutritionally their illness. When you cook animal flesh, meat, as you like to call it, 
you're going to suffer from a lysine deficiency. That's an amino acid. I'm going to write it down here so you'll see it. Lysine is completely destroyed when you cook. Lysine regulates the pineal gland. And you are eating something that's stopping your pineal gland from acting. Lysine is completely destroyed when you cook. Glutamic acid is completely destroyed when you cook meat. This feeds your brain, feeds your melanin. So you are eating something that's causing you to have problems. When you have a lysine deficiency, you're more susceptible to infections. And sure enough, when they have a disease such as a cold or herpes, they take lysine, 2,000 milligrams, T uh, TID, three times a day, on empty stomach between meals, lysine. Wars off infections. In fact, it'll get rid of the bumps on your face, which is usually worms. Worms come out through the skin, and you call them whiteheads and blackheads. Those are worms coming out, hatching the eggs. Uh, but I don't like to talk about these things because people get sick, uh, I think. So when you cook the meat, you have a lysine deficiency, which regulates the pineal gland. So they don't have a regulator for their pineal gland. This is someone who is mentally ill. Then they're destroying the glutamic acid, which feeds the brain. So they're not getting the amino acid that nourishes the brain. So they have two major protein deficiencies, glutamic acid, lysine. Then they have the mineral deficiencies. And none of these things can be stabilized without vitamin C and digestive enzymes, which you find in papaya, mangoes, bananas, plantain, apricots, strawberries. All of these tropical fruits have all of these ingredients in them. And where were all these tropical fruits at? In Africa. And who was eating them all along? We were. Now we do not eat those fruits. And so now we're following the Ice Age people. Now we're getting into wolf pack behavior, which we call gangs. You see, all of this is coming from nutritional. This is a nutritional foundation for what you call white racism. If I ate this way, I would have to behave that way. There's no way I can get around it. You would have to be mentally ill if you ate this way. That's why you are not out of your mind, you're out of their mind. That's why your ancestors said, boy, you ain't in your right mind. That's why I would say, when you don't achieve your adulthood, it, when you become an adult, you count in the village, in the community. You count. So when they got upset with you, say, boy, you no count. You are no count. That's where it comes from. <laughs> you see, they were always trying to emphasize this thing for us. So they put together a diet to stabilize our melanin, to stabilize us nutritionally so we wouldn't get mentally ill. So the Europeans have some big problems today putting together food. Their largest illness is digestive. You go back to uh, colon cancer, diverticulitis, outpocketing of the colon, you got diabetes. If you go down their list of illnesses, you'll find that the biggest illnesses are di of the digestive system because they haven't mastered the simple art of eating. That is very sad. It's been going on 5,000 years and they have not learned how to eat. That is very sad. So I'm talking about some people that suffer from a nutritional form of mental illness known as white racism who resort to wolf pack behavior, which we call orgies when it deals with sex. And they still, because of that, remember I was telling you about that violent nature they were living in where they were short of food and they had to attack each other in hordes and, when the, and then they had to eat each other because it was such a food shortage so they were into cannibalism and attacking each other. And when there was food, they would eat too much. And there was no food, they would starve. And, and they were always under attack and always being attacking someone. So they used to this kind of violent nature. So sure enough, when they wanted to be entertained, they'd do something violent. They skydive. Something to simulate violence and fear. So they get on a roller coaster. You see what I'm talking about? 
So they used to eat in the cave, so when they go to a restaurant, it's got to be dark with a candlelight. Come on. Come on. I want to see what I'm eating. I'm sorry. You know, so I'm just saying the things that are apparent, are present with us today, that are destroying us today, is, came from yesterday. The things that are hurting us romantically and sexually and with our relationship come from slavery, comes from being around these people who introduce their diet to us, their melanin deficiency to us, their mineral deficiency to us, who find disease attractive throughout their history. Disease has always been attractive. Golda was very attractive at one time in European history. It was very attractive to have a uh, carbon deposit on your face, what you call a mole, and white women used to paint them on that face because they con considered that to be attractive. Carbon waste trying to get out your body, you call it a mole, and they were painted on their face because the mole to them was attractive. So they made attractions. The whole mindset is a little unbalanced for me to talk about. It. Sometimes I have a very difficult time trying to explain. When we look at white people, we're looking eye to eye but their eye does not meet our eye. It never has, it never will. We are too spiritual. We are too in tune with the universe because of the pineal gland that has the highest electromagnetic attraction to the universe. It vibrates, it connects us to every star, every planet in the galaxy. It connects us to each other and a universal spirituality that goes unchallenged. So I'm just trying to capsulize and give you a little bit of idea of a, a disease group of animals that behave like human beings, known as the Caucasians, named after the Caucasian mountain, who still think that dirt and rocks are very expensive, who fight over dirt, gold, diamonds come on <laughs> be for real fighting over dirt killing each other over dirt no we're dealing with a diseased group of people and we have to stand up to the fact that they are diseased and you cannot tell them they're diseased because they're too diseased to know it this doesn't make sense next time you think it makes sense to tell somebody they're drunk that they're drunk go and do it see how much sense it makes Walk up to a drunk and say, hey, you're drunk. Ah, yeah, well. <laughs> uh, what does it mean to them? It's not even registering. And you're trying to register this crystallized thought of you're mentally ill. Why don't you go somewhere and get yourself fixed? Get some help. Get some treatment to them, and it's not going to work. What we're about is healing ourselves. Yeah. The reason why I, I know so much about African history is because I know European history. You have to know your enemy. You see, you have to know their wolf pack behavior. Know that they come from a mineral deficiency. Know that they li have a lysin deficiency from amino acids and a glutamic acid deficiency. Know that when you have a deficient uh, pineal gland, a deficient amount of melanin, you're going to have obsessive compulsive behavior because you're hiding an inferiority complex. You are inferior. You do not possess the intelligence of African people. You do not have the architecture structures to validate that. You do not have the clothing. The whole thing is absurd for us to even try to communicate this. A European concept. It's a crease in my pants. Why is it there? What does it do? I mean, uh, you have to look at these things. Why is it there? What does it do? <laughs> if I'm not in constantly in a battle and need to protect myself from neck wounds, I don't need a tie. They wear a tie because of battle to protect themselves from the neck wounds. And that's why they wear a tie. They button their sleeves because they used to, used to carry drugs under there. Have you ever seen the older movies with the, the cocaine sniffers? And so they have a button there. But we don't need a button on our sleeve. Why is the button there? Why can't they just make the sleeve long and put your arm through it? I mean, a lot of things that they do just doesn't make sense, but we accept it as normal. But it's not normal behavior. It's not normal behavior to inferiorize your woman. It's not normal behavior to enslave another group of people. It's not normal behavior to invent history. They invented themselves in history. They write themselves in history, but when you go back, there is no history other than the Ice Age. There is nothing else. 
They have no other place in history. They are not Romans. They are not Greeks. They are Europeans. Romans and Greeks are Mediterranean state empires. They are nowhere near Europe. They were a part of Northeast Africa, always were, until they liberated themselves and formed their own state. The Aegean, Palagascan, the Africans who controlled that area, who colonized them and taught them civilization. That's how they learned civilization, when Ramesses colonized them, when we had the uh, European plantations, as you would call them today, trying to teach them certain things. We colonized Europe, trying to teach these people. Unfortunately, we didn't prepare them for the lesson. So we poured into that cup and that cup couldn't hold it. And that infuriated them. And that made them more angry. And that made them more obsessive and compulsive and more violent prone. Um, I think I will just uh, entertain a few questions about this because I may not have covered all of it. Uh, I know I didn't. So whatever questions you have, it, even if it's not in relationship to this, I'll try to answer a few. Uh, he was up first. You don't mind. Yes, sir. I'm interested in you talking about the violent behavior and how it's manifested. What about the horror movies? Is this, these horror movies that they are projecting or uh, right. uh, giving to the uh, public, is they part of the same mentality about compulsive behavior? Yes. Because it's high profit and that kid is crazy for a high horror movie. Oh, yes. Uh, you're getting into the uh, European superstitions. Uh, most of their superstitions are built in their religion, so we don't recognize them as superstitions. Europeans are very superstitious people. Very, you see. And you're going into their demonology. Remember, they did not have an organized religion as such. No religion at all during the Ice Age. So they believe in these evil forces coming at them all the time. And they always wanted to make themselves be able to conquer this evil force. So this is what they call the Frankenstein complex, uh, where the black people will go to see a horror film, and uh, we're afraid of Frankenstein, but you should be afraid of Dr. Frankenstein. Yes. You see? Yeah. So what I'm going back, I got the horror movies, now I'm going back to Dr. Frankenstein. It's a, it's a demonology kind of worship that they inherently have. Everything they do mostly is 90% superstitions, which is flowered with a whole lot of intellectual concepts and all this sort of thing. You know, a superstition like um, to alcohol, which is an evil spirit, believed to chase away another spirit. This is a superstitious belief. Then they have these evil bacteria that attack you and give you a disease, and you chase them out with another evil bacteria. That's why they give you a, 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 a illness to cure another illness. It comes out of that superstitious belief structure. So if I want to uh, fight a disease, I will give you a disease. This is strictly superstitious. It doesn't even make sense. You are worried about catching, oh, I don't know, smallpox. So I put smallpox pus into your arm, call it a vaccination, and say, hey, see? Now I put an evil spirit in your arm to fight off the evil, other evil spirit. You say, well, if you want me to fight off smallpox, why don't you just give me a mango or a papaya and make me more healthy? Don't make me sick. So, but this comes out of their superstitious organization of their society because they don't have that much. You're coming from such a large foundation. I know you don't even conceive of what I'm talking about. I'm trying to break you down below Sesame Street to run down this European kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, that's yeah. all superstition. So. Um, the peanut gland that you were speaking about, uh -huh. um, in what relationship could you tell me as far as the Dogon people as far as that being of spirituality and the cosmic. Oh, okay. That's, uh, well, let me go back. Uh, okay. This thing called the Morris Code comes from the drum, the language of the drum. And after they got the code of the drum, they outlawed the drum, and it came out with the Morris Code. Okay. So the, the language is a, a rhythm-based thing. We're not talking in a rhythm form. See. Uh, this is a special announcement by the statistics. Uh, uh, I was, it seems like I'm going way somewhere to explain this thing by going into the Morris Code and the drum and all this sort of thing of rhythm. 
But 99% of our illness is a illness is a rhythm, of the rheumaticity of the body. Now planets have rhythm. You see, and the rhythm coincides to the rhythm in your internal organ system. So all of this, you you and you are already plugged into this whole system out there, this galaxy, because of the rhythmicity of your body. So anything that moves is going to create a rhythm which they call an electrical impulse. Now, they use their own little words for these things, uh, electromagnetic force. It's just a rhythm. Anything that moves is gonna, has to move by a rhythm. And you can pick up this rhythm, whether it's here or over there. It's just a matter of tuning your system. They tune their system in what they call Kundalini today, by a system of breathing, and you pass the air through each one of the chakras. You start off with the 12 ones. Uh, we have 12 uh, melanin centers in our brain. The Europeans have two. You follow me? So you're asking me a, a question from a 12 melanin center, and I am have to go through a two melanin center language to answer you. So it gets kind of awkward. So anyway, so you got these 12 melanin centers, you have these 12 cranial nerves, you have all these wonderful things going on, and so you can feel rhythm, whether it's right there or over there, because everything is rhythm to us. And rhythm is another word for Reem, and Reem is another word for Rome, Rome is another word for Romance, Romance is another word for Nile, Nile is another word for Osiris, Osiris is another word for the laws of the great truth. Because Osiris went around allegedly putting the world in order. And while he was away, a man took care of educating his son called Amento, and you call him a mentor, that kind of thing. So we go into all of this to explain this rhythm. We had the stories, then we write the stories on our clothes. So the language was just, it was nothing for you to communicate to the sun because the pole, pineal gland is solar. It's solar. So you already, you're already space age when you were born. You see, when you're born. And, and, and the space age is, your, your connection with the rhythm of the planets reflected in the Europeans, they would say, there's a man in the moon. That's why they had this guy that looks like a piece of cheese, it looks like the moon. The woman is the moon, and your reflection is in the woman, and the woman's reflection is in you. And that's why there's a man in the, in the moon. That's why it's, there's a male attribute to the woman, you see. And we use these stories, the man in the moon, to, 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 to say all this. So if you send out a signal from your solar center, it's only going to vibrate to another solar center. That's the law of lights that Hanneman said he invented in Philadelphia. <laughs> The laws of lights, treating lights, and all that kind of system comes out of Africa. Now, all you're going to do is know that each one of these uh, 12 melanin centers is tuned. You have, uh, what is it, uh, four, four, uh, four polar guards, right? You have, you add them up, you get 12, what you call the zodiac. And just like you go into the, the 52 cards, uh, 52 weeks in a year, 365 points to the deck, all these kind of solar or cosmic games that we call playing cards, you know, had nothing to do with that. All these things were from day one you were introduced to. <laughs> so you were connected to the whole universe, the whole dark star, star and all of that out of the Dogen religion, as they call it, from day one. Even from a simple, what the Chinese learned from us, what they call checkers, what the Europeans call uh, playing che uh, checkers which has nothing to do with that at all. It has something to do with the 12 melanin centers in your brain, the 12 chakras, and it teaches you how to balance each one of them having the male and female principles. One color, the one color checkers is the woman, the other is the man. And the game is to teach the harmony of the relationship move. Each time the piece moves, the other piece has to move counter, just like I'm walking. So it teaches you how to walk in harmony with the woman, you see. When the hormone level goes this way, you have to go that way. So uh, a lady will just say something to you and say, that don't make sense. And you get all upset and say, why is she picking on me? You know, you're in a relationship. And it seems like the lady may have said something and just exploded on you for some reason. And you say, well, what happened here? Well, that's because you were supposed to do that before she did that. So you didn't do that, so she had to do that, and the whole thing got out of balance. <laughs> and it seems like it's something explosive when it was just supposed to have been an energy exchange. You see, but all this started with, with checkers and chess and the spiritual toys, which you call the rattle. 
it's a little thing that vibrates your melanin centers that they give a child to help stimulate the pineal gland. And they tune each one of these things that the Europeans call toys. And each one of them has a different color related to the colors of the, the glandular network related to each one of the chakras. So that the, the kid was given, as we call it, these toys, which were spiritual instruments. Because they had to be raised as a spirit first to become a human being second. So we were raised in spirits. You see, sons of light. That's, where you call a, that's why you call a boy your son. A son of light. And so we were raising sons. And so we had to tune them a certain way, so you give them these certain instruments, which the Europeans call toys. So from day one, the whole world was a whole world to you. You understand? But the Europeans, when they were reaching around 20 years of age, say back to the 13th century, they still believed the world was flat. When they came to America, they still believed the world was flat. I'm trying to give you the level of intelligence we were dealing with when we came in, in contact with them during so-called slavery. The, the, yeah. Here's some people that believe the world was flat, still believe that there was such a thing as ghosts that will eat you up at the edge of the, the, the horizon. So they wouldn't venture past the horizon. When the sun went down, that left the, the edge of the earth, so that's like they wouldn't walk past New York, you know, because they knew the sun went down that way, so they would go down that way. So they, they wouldn't walk certain distances. All this was going on in their metallurgy, knowing that the pilgrims had a syphilis breakout when they landed on Pl Plymouth Rock. Knowing all of these things, they, their whole level of human behavior is just not nowhere what you think it was. They were still pulling out teeth to cure diseases during that time. They were still letting blood to cure diseases during that time. That's where the barber's pole comes from. They were still doing that to cure headaches. Bloodletting. They eat this as candy. This comes from their bloodletting. That's what this little drip of blood is about on this king, which is actually the scepter of Mhoptep. You see? I'm just saying, the level where they are and the level where you are and the questions you're asking, I haven't even attempted to ask. I'm just trying to bring you up to, you already have the answer. That's a beautiful question. Uh, I think I have time for one more. The lady here, please. Yes, it's very the highest amongst black women. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And I would like to know the feedback on that because it's a black woman having a child in the stage. You get, you get, I have lupus. You get women, older stages, really white from out, young women. It's highest among black women than any other group in America. So. Yeah, we, um, well, just going back from the beginning, uh, sunshine. Uh, it may seem trivial, but that is very important to us. We got to have the sun. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this. I'm saying you got to have the sun. I understand allergic reactions, uh, but that's the first thing. Now, just to give a, uh, everyone kind of understand what we call a, a, a allergy. A allergy is the body's failure to digest something. When the body fails to handle something, we call it an allergy. If your body fails to handle pollen, it's an allergy. It's a failure of the body to digest something. So if you want to cure someone from a pollen allergy, you feed them pollen. We actually give bee pollen to people with allergies. So uh, this is where this allergic reaction comes from. If a person becomes toxic, say from, uh, oh, uh, okay, alcohol, and they become toxic and you give them some more alcohol, they're going to vomit, their body's going to throw it out. And then you would say, he's allergic to alcohol. You see, because his body's rejecting it. The body is toxic and it is, it is maxed out. It says no more. Just like drinking a whole lot of water, you become toxic and then you will die. So we have a toxic condition that no longer can handle anymore. So the tissue loses its ability to define what it does. And it does the wrong thing. It pendiculates or you know, whatever. It grows, you know, large in certain areas. Because the tissue has lost its identity. It's a certain substance that identifies what the tissue should do. 
And that tells this tissue to be muscle, that to be bone. So when we are into a European diet, second generation now, we're into an anti-melanin diet. The blood is too thick for the nutrients to recycle. So whatever the melanin puts out, it doesn't get it back. And if it doesn't get it back, it becomes immune deficient, immune deficient until it can no longer dictate to the cells, you do this, you do that. And lupus is that kind of condition. It's actually a melanin deficiency disorder. You have to stimulate this gland. You're going to have to get into some lysine. You're going to have to get into some glutamic acid. You're going to have to stimulate that gland. You're going to have to get into some phenylalanine, those amino, amino acids. You're going to have to get into something that stimulates the glandular network. Blessed thistle. You have to get something to give your brain more tissue perfusion, more blood. Go to cola. So you got blessed thistle, you got black cohosh, you got damiana, you got licorice, the little sticks that our ancestors chewed on. You know, they, they were always stimulating this gland, even in hot weather. And then you have to get into the water. Without the water, you, you, you're lost. You got to drink at least a gallon a day. You're lost. And you cannot wear black pants because you are not letting the right amount of light get into these gonads down here. You're throwing off the very color that it needs. You never will see any picture of your ancestor with any black pants on. Never. Never. You will never see a picture of your ancestors with their legs crossed. Never. That is a symptom of constipation that comes from Europe trying to shift the pressure off of their colon. So they cross their legs because they're so constipated, you see. So you won't see the dark pants, you know, black and all that kind of color. You won't see the legs cross. So we're doing a whole lot of anti-melanin things. That's what I'm trying to say. So the basic step is to start feeding the system to, to wake it up with uh, certain herbs that, that gives more direction because you have something, cells that need more directions, basically. Uh, I think I have one more and then we have to call it quits in. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, was gonna, um, I wanted to ask you a question about something I heard you mention on um, um, PMW the other day. Okay. I thought it was interesting. It was about the sperm, right, in the male, and about how we are into the lustful and the reproducing, that, that slave mentality you were talking about, that we keep, we're into, um, um, not reproducing, but into sex all the time, all the time, all the time. You were saying how that, could you relate that to that thing, and about how that relates to our thinking, and could you think a little time with that? Uh, possibly. <laughs> Take a little time with sex. That's probably a big problem. That's, I'll be speaking at 5 o'clock on all that. And um, for uh, like uh, information, if you wanted a copy of this tape or any other tape, you just write me at Post Office Box 2475. 2475. Post Office Box 2475. And that's in uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. And then you can get copies of this tape and Holistic Health tape. Uh, and the Gullah History tape, and any of the books that I have. It's no problem. Uh, and I'm in a little town called Beaufort. Uh, that's, and that's in South Carolina. Excuse me. Uh, I'm not used to writing this way. So, and then you can get copies of this tape or any other tape and any of the books. Uh, I have, uh, these tapes will be ready probably by the end of this month. And the children, infants and adolescents and children's health book will be out in May. A and B is publishing that. And uh, the book I did on Gullah African American history is, will be, uh, the next edition will be out. I do have some now. And of course, African Holistic Health, which I'm revising, will be out again in May, which will be totally revised uh, to date. Remembering that I, uh, I'm, uh, what, 47 now, and I wrote that information when I was 20. So I've gone someplace else altogether, and uh, I'm trying to uh, get as much information to you as I possibly can because it really doesn't belong to me, and I, I really cringe when I hear a lot of things that are so terribly wrong. <laughs>
that go on in this country is normal. But nonetheless, you can get copies of this tape and any other tape and the audios and the books by writing this address. Uh, I thank you all for participating. I, I will see you all again probably at 5 o'clock. Remember, he will be speaking, keynote speaker at 5 o'clock.